explaining the physical state and electrical conductivity of the oxides and chlorides of period 3. Okay, that's period 3, except for argon, there is no oxide. And sodium, magnesium and aluminium oxides, well, they're all solids at standard temperature pressure. So if they're solids, that implies a strong bond, and that would be ionic bonding, isn't it? That's sodium, magnesium, aluminium are all metals, oxygen's a non-metal, so it's going to be ionic bonding. Now for something to conduct electricity, it needs freely moving charged particles. That allows electricity to, uh, to be conducted. And indeed, they're freely moving, they're melted. Charged, yes, ions are charged, and they're particles. So the conductivity of those three is good when it's melted. And of course, when it's a solid, they don't conduct because the particles won't be freely moving. Silicon dioxide is next. Silicon dioxide, you and I would call that sand, and that's a solid. It's a covalent macromolecule or a giant macromolecular structure. Lots of strong bonds there, so it's a solid. But it's a poor conductor. The particles are not charged in silicon dioxide. The following oxides, well, anything with a high molecular mass is likely to be more likely to be a solid or a liquid compared to the lower molecular mass one. So for sulfur dioxide, that's a gas, but sulfur trioxide has a higher molecular mass, more electrons, more van der Waals, so it's more likely to be a liquid or a solid. And the same for the other ones as well. Of course, molecular polarity plays its part too. So do they conduct electricity? Well, there are no charged particles because it's all covalently bonded. Even when you melt them, they're all simple molecular. So no charged particles, even if I melt them, they're not going to have freely moving charged particles so they're going to be insulated. None of those conduct electricity. And moving on to the chlorides of period 3, well, a lot of it's very similar ideas here. First of all, sodium and magnesium chloride, they're ionic. So they're going to be solids. Al2Cl6, well, that's a little tricky. Looking at that, you have to decide, is that ionic or is that covalent? Now, it can actually have aspects of both. There are different ways you can, in different conditions, give different chlorides of aluminium. But if it's the uh, empirical formula, then it's going to be ionic. So AlCl3 is ionic, but Al2Cl6, that's not empirical. So that's implying covalent in this case. So Al2Cl6 is going to be covalent. So that's going to change the conductivity. And all of the rest of them are also simpler, simple molecular covalent, just little individual molecules going around, not huge crystals. SiCl4, silicon tetrachloride, that looks like a little tetrahedron, individual molecules, and that's a liquid. The IB loves that one, silicon tetrachloride. They're going to try and trick you to think it's something other than a liquid. PCl3, PCl5, yet the one with the higher molecular mass has the higher melting point. And chlorine, that's a gas. Chlorine chloride, chlorine monochloride, not sure. Putting in the conductivity, the covalent ones are all going to be very low conductivity. Al2Cl6, that's poor, but if you said none, I'm sure that they'd let you off with that as well. 